point though. All right, guys, I am here with Kelsey, Sean, and Josh is in the corner over there. You may chime in, but uh, Kelsey just brought up a good point. So we're talking about cravings because I know you got a lot of you guys posted um, with that same question with cravings and then afternoon crashes. So we're gonna try and answer that. Uh, Kelsey just brought up a good point, which I think is worth mentioning. So Kelsey, what did you say? So how do you? Kelsey said, did you used to drink more than once a week? Um, maybe when I was in college. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what did you just say? So how did you, Josh asked her actually, how did you discipline yourself to drink just once a week? Um, because I'm working. So uh, just habits. It's something that's more important than drinking to me. Um, yeah, so I think the, the more, is it fair to say? So the more, I think the point is, out of sight, out of mind. I'm sure you guys all heard that, have heard that saying. So the fact that Kelsey's doing so many other things, and that that's a good way to get rid of a bad habit or a craving, um, is just by substituting something else. So some other activity, right? Like either walking, working out. Uh, for Kelsey, is just staying busy. Uh, I'm actually the same way. So I just thought that was valuable. Um, all right, let's go into craving. So. What do you guys suggest for people, or Sean, let's start with you. What do you suggest? So when clients ask you, like, hey, I'm craving this in the afternoon, or I'm having sharp cravings, because mo most of the questions were for sweets. Mm -hmm. So what would um, you... The answer is you're probably not eating enough leading up to that point. So you're probably not eating enough for breakfast. Maybe you need an extra snack um, between breakfast and lunch, or you're not eating enough for lunch. When I say not eating enough, part of it is calories, but part of it is also volume of food. You can have a chicken fried steak, which could be a thousand calories, so you have a lot of calories, but you know, you could eat something that's less calories, like grilled chicken with a bunch of veggies and maybe have a sweet potato, and it may not be as many calories, but it's more volume of food. So because of that, you're going to feel fuller longer and you're less likely to have that crush. And a lot of times, if it's for chocolate specifically, um, one thing that I read is that your body's craving magnesium because there's mm -hmm. magnesium in chocolate. So if you're like, oh God, I need chocolate, well, you might just need to start supplementing a magnesium with magnesium or increase your veggies because that has magnesium in it. Yeah, Sean brings up a good point because we're just focusing uh, on the protein for breakfast, right? We really haven't coached you guys on anything else unless you're being coached by another IPT coach at the moment, but if you're eating processed carbohydrates, like he just said, chicken fried steak is gonna f make you feel very different than like grilled chicken or even just steak by itself. So if you're eating stuff like that, you know, you can expect a crash because your digestive system can't handle it the same way. Kelsey on cravings? <laughs> um. What do you tell clients? So when clients like, they say they have cravings in the afternoon uh, for sweets or chocolate? Um, one of two things, either I like find alternatives. If you really, you know, you can't discipline yourself enough not to eat something, find alternatives. So like, for example, um, when people, cause I'm an, I love ice cream, but I don't eat ice cream all the time. Um, doing like adding the things that you would kind of like your ice cream, plain Greek yogurt, adding cacao or cocoa powder even is going to be better. Um, uh, if you need to put some peanut butter in there um substituting something versus going gung-ho for your ice cream um so finding ways to essentially get that sweet fix that's not uh, nearly as bad or a second one too um which we were talking about before is also if you're having those cravings mm -hmm. keep them out of <clears throat> your house um it's if they're there you're probably going to go get them um those are a couple different tips. And chocolate, you have clients that. Yeah, same thing that Sean said. Usually with the magnesium. Okay. Um, or it's literally, <clears throat> there's clients that have had that as a habit to always have like a Hershey Kiss every day, and it's just so ingrained in their mind that they think they they want it, but really it's just a pattern. Yeah, so. yeah. So that's the other thing, guys. So like, both of them already mentioned it. Um, chocolate does have magnesium in it, so sometimes it is your body craving magnesium um but i would kind of make sure you self-analyze whether you ate enough first um and then i drew this little thing here 
So just make sure, I think most of you guys, if you're having cravings in the afternoon, you probably didn't eat enough at either meal one or meal two, or maybe you didn't have a snack. So, cause some people said they were really hungry in the feedback. So like Sean said, just make sure you're having a full meal. And like I said in the video, some people, I know there's people that have like just a habit and they're just conditioned to have like just a salad with protein at lunch for whatever reason. But if you're still hungry or you're having cravings in the afternoon, odds are you probably didn't eat enough. So you either need to add some sort of carbs to that meal um, or more calories, if that makes sense. Um, other thing I wanna say, fruit versus other carbs. So uh, this isn't talked about a lot, but you need to do some, I would do some self analyzing with this as well. So some people are what's called sympathetic dominant versus parasympathetic. and to keep it simple, basically people that are wired all the time. So like if you're somebody that's like constantly wired and just doesn't know how to relax, right? That would be sympathetic dominant. Somebody else is parasympathetic, which is synonymous with rest and digest, right? So somebody that's kind of like even keeled throughout the whole day, they don't really have sharp ups and downs. Um, if you're the type of person that's very wired, your digestion is probably going to be weaker because you're constantly wanting to move if that bit makes sense so for those people um and this is from personal experience i would suggest using fruit as opposed to other carbs like oatmeal uh sweet potatoes things that are heavy because fruit is lighter and easier to digest and it's not bad so things like berries bananas right that kind of stuff and i can vouch for this personally because i'm the i'm the type of person that's wired so if i eat uh, actually yesterday i tested this if i have oatmeal in the morning it kind of drags me down so like an hour or two later, I feel like crap versus if I just have protein and fruit or something like that, um, I feel my energy levels are more consistent. So experiment with the type of carbs that you guys are eating during the day. Uh, the afternoon crash, you guys have any suggestions on that? Afternoon crash, um, either you're not getting enough sleep consistently and by the time the afternoon hits, you need more sleep because you're not getting consistent enough. Uh, part of it could be dehydration as well. You mm -hmm. just need to drink more water. Um, and I had another one that I, oh, um, so you might be crashing just cause you need a little bit of something. So just a small bite of something or just a small snack is usually enough to help people out and kick them back up into gears. So that way they don't have that crash. If you feel like you're starting to crash, try eating something, drinking a little bit of water, or um, focus on trying to get more sleep during each night. Yeah, and also just, an like we've already said, analyze what you had for that day. So if you, like look at what you ate for lunch and breakfast, and if it wasn't enough, and the next day try and eat a little bit more and see if that helps with the crash. Anything, Kelsey, on the crash? <laughs> Do you crash in the afternoon? No, because I just keep going and going. Okay. All right, so the other thing, guys, uh, just make sure, that's why in the tips on the sheet, we said make sure you guys eat every three to four hours because some, some people do have different insulin responses to carbohydrates. So that's the reason if, if you eat consistently, you're less likely to crash. But if you're, if you're missing meals or you're going like five, six hours without eating, you will crash. So that, that's probably another reason. Um, one last thing I wanted to touch on. So in the evening, okay, if uh, you're somebody that's eating very light during the day, so that it's kind of synonymous with what Sean said earlier, right? Eating enough during the day. If you have very small meals during the day, okay, you're gonna wind up having extreme cravings, especially if you're somebody that stays up late. Okay, I can give you from personal experience, um, I am actually that type of person where I, I eat lighter during the day and I eat a lot at night. And I can tell you by the evening, like my cravings are through the roof, but it, it works for me and it's kind of a play on intermittent fasting. But the reason is at night, like if you're staying up past 10 o'clock, your body needs to secrete cortisol, which is a stress hormone in order for you to stay up. So if you're staying up late, you're automatically putting your body in a state of stress. So if you're having those cravings at night, it's probably because you're working too late. And if that's you, that's fine. Then... What I would do if like you're having trouble sleeping or you're still having cravings, then make sure you have decent amounts of carbs at meal two at lunch or at least your last snack if you're not snacking. Um, otherwise, have carbs at dinner. 
because I know some people also, for whatever reason, avoid carbs at dinner because carbs will actually help you decrease cortisol, if that makes sense. Anything else on cravings? What about triggers? Actually, that's in the precision stuff, right? Like how, how, uh, like sometimes, sometimes a, a craving is just a habit. And there's a whole process on how to, I guess, self analyze that. Maybe we'll just post that from precision because I think it's like a step by step, right? Yeah. Where some, some of your, some of the things that you guys are saying are cravings, and we'll end with this because the video is getting too long now. Uh, some of the things that you guys, maybe saying that are cravings are actually just habits where like for so many years you've just conditioned yourself to say well i need this after this meal right it's like the whole it's like drinking coffee every morning right it's kind of like an addiction um but which is it can be a good or bad habit if that makes sense so some sometimes it's just breaking that um we'll post about that unless you guys have anything else to mention nope all right, guys, that is it. If you have questions, post them below or message one of us and we will see you in flock.